you def have some sort of surgery on top of the exercise. Please be more open about this. Especially if you're gonna be posting yourself online. You can tell by the weird shape your breast has now. Weird circular implant, like not a natural separation between them. There was definitely a diastasis correction too, otherwise you would still have some loose skin. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Des, also known as Des B. And today the B stands for bestie because I'm gonna give you the 411 and the actual T behind having a baby. When I got that comment the other day, it was on a video and I'll be sure to play it here really quickly. Turn it off. Now I'm not gonna lie, in that video, I looked great. I was fully digested, I wasn't bloated at all, I had slept really good that night before, and I was also self-tanned. By no means does this mean that my body was at all altered, but what it does mean is that it was a great day. First off, let's crack a cold one. I got the new Alani Nutrition Koozie Cooler, so cute, and I'm drinking a blue slush, because I'm gonna need a drink to get through this. I miss doing get ready with me videos as well. So like if you guys end up liking this, let me know. First and foremost, when I got that comment, I honestly laughed immediately because I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I got, I have fake, okay? I think that's a pretty obvious thing that I've had now for five years. If there's one thing I've never done <laughs> is get any form of surgery other than what I'm open about and that is that I have fake boobs. Always been jealous of the girls that have the really nice cleave naturally in their bikinis. My chest just isn't shaped that way. I have a very wide rib cage. I've always known that about myself and thank you for pointing out my insecurity. <laughs> No, but really, my body type is not your body type. Your body type isn't mine. So let's just clear the air first by saying I have not had any form of surgery. But what got me was the idea that this person felt the need to say, in order for my skin in my body to look the way that it did, that I had to have had surgery to correct my diastasis recti. So you might be wondering what diastasis recti is, and that is a separation of the core that occurs during pregnancy. When you have a small little body and your baby needs to have room in order to grow, you your belly is going to expand, right? With that, your six pack muscles are going to separate to make space for baby. What I did during my pregnancy and continue to preach on my Instagram, on my TikTok, anywhere that I make videos as well, is proper core recruitment. This is something I really drove home during my second pregnancy and my first. But of course, after your first time through anything, you learn even more. For some moms, diastasis recti will not go away as easily. Maybe had never known how to properly recruit their core Core. Maybe they were getting out of bed and sitting up in the morning and not realizing how much damage that could do to their body over time. But I'm sure you guys can all vouch for me. If I were to have ever gotten surgery, you would know about it. That just goes to show how educated I am and how greatly I took care of my body during that pregnancy period. I felt like though it would just be such a disservice to not take you guys through what I did and also give you tips on what you can do better postpartum. So postpartum 101, what do you need to expect and what is going to happen to you? Pregnancy is a whole nother story. And if you guys want me to go in depth on better like pregnancy prep, let me know. But when it comes to the initial stages of postpartum, the first thing that you're gonna feel is extreme euphoria. And euphoria in the fact that you do not have a belly anymore. Now this is obviously gonna differ like person to person because there are some people that end up giving birth. The extreme change in hormones can actually make them feel like very sad and have a thing called baby blues. Well, you just find yourself crying a lot, which for me is not like out of the normal. <laughs> you're upset it's kind of a foreign experience like you can't really pinpoint the emotions that you have but you just know that you don't want to have them first let's start with that what to expect after delivery first and foremost expect delivery <laughs> expect that baby to come out once you get to the hospital i feel like naturally any mother to be you kind of snap into this idea that it's like yep i'm gonna have a baby and it's gonna have to come out of me somehow and you kind of just go into to like survival mode. But let me tell you, even if you think that you can't do it, you can. We have been giving birth to babies for how many years of life, right? You can do it. After delivery, you're gonna push that baby out or get that baby cut out of you, whatever way that baby decides to enter the world. 
No matter what though, you're gonna have bleeding. I know it's crazy, but even if you have a C-section, you will still bleed. Some people, it might just last a week. Some people, two weeks. Some people, a couple weeks. Some people, a month. Some people, six weeks, whatever it may be. But as always, make sure that you're consulting your own doctor and provider if it seems prolonged or if there's clots or anything like that. I've had two different experiences having babies. So when it comes to what to expect, usually they put baby on your chest and you get this like golden hour. This is like skin to skin and this like really euphoric experience. Well, my first child was premature. So he came eight weeks early and spontaneous delivery. Therefore, I didn't have skin to skin. He was immediately taken to the NICU. I was just kind of left there to wonder what the f happened. Now my second baby, he was taken away from me for about five minutes, put on oxygen, and I was lucky enough to have him back on my chest. But the issue with my second delivery was that not only was it all natural, but I also had a retained placenta. This created just another traumatic experience on its own, along with the trauma that came in the pregnancy already of a genetic birth defect called a CPAM. So when it comes to what to expect after delivery, I feel like I can never actually tell you because I have had two really weird experiences. For the most part, after delivery, you're feeling pretty good. You're happy that it's over and it's time to recover. If you do not have the Freedom Mom postpartum labor and delivery gown, you really need to get that. Or if you know you're gonna have another baby, make sure you get that next time. That has been like the number one godsend in my postpartum experience is having something nice and clean to put on after I gave birth. And girl, you know I packed my skincare, I packed my hair care, I packed anything that could make me feel at home because with my second baby, I was induced. However, even if I wasn't induced, it would have all been in my hospital bag. Right away, depending on again how baby came out, you can really start getting up and doing whatever you want. Now, if you had an epidural, obviously you're gonna have to kind of stay still there for a little bit, but for the most part, you just kind of start living. Like I said, my second baby was all natural, but because of having a retained placenta, I ended up having to go to the operating room and have a spinal block anyway. Kind of defeated the whole purpose of having no epidural. But trust me, it wasn't a decision. Baby just decided to come out. Anesthesiologist was late. If you are someone who your goal is to have an epidural, do not wait, babe, because if you wait, it could be too late. That an anesthesiologist is in another room in labor and delivery in a C-section, they will not be able to get to you, babe. So you really have to make that decision early and do not wait too long. If your goal is to have an epidural, if you were to right now say, hey, you're gonna have your third baby, what are you gonna do? I would probably get an epidural. I can't truly say that I noticed a huge difference in between having an epidural versus not in terms of recovery. So like once you're home, once you're chilling, did that affect my recovery differently? I, did, I can't really say so. So again, everyone's experience is different, honor that. But for me, I can't say I really noticed a difference. I remember after giving birth, I went home the next day. And the funniest thing to me was the fact that I went into Jimmy John's and ordered a sandwich walked right in there, didn't give a crap. And no one would have ever known that I was walking in there just having given birth to a baby. Us moms are truly super women. Once I got home, the real adjustment begins. And this goes for any postpartum experience. The biggest tip I can have for you is make sure that you get some tucks. The best thing I did was take a huge maxi pad, put on one of my Freedom Mom like ice packs, put on like three tooks, and that was everything for me. I then sprayed a little bit of perineal healing foam, you know, around there, and that allowed me to heal so much better and avoid massive hemorrhoids because guess what? They're coming. The first week I really stayed pretty close to bed. I didn't do much. I, you know, maybe did some laundry and folded it. Definitely was able to have support from my family, which was very important. And after that, you just kind of snap back into like your normal self. But the biggest thing is making sure that you are properly recovering in terms of your pelvic floor and your core. Even though that baby is gone, your abs are still ripped completely open. So this starts the first phase of bringing those back together. This goes as simple as like, when you go to stand up or when you go to sit up, we naturally wanna crunch up. As a new mom who has just given birth, or like I said, this goes even into pregnancy, you can't just crunch up. This will severely damage your core even more. So what I want you to do instead is focus on log rolling, being in a side position and rolling over to then push yourself up 
from the side. This will make a huge difference for you in being able to recover, and this made a huge difference for me. After about nine days is when I went down to the basement for the first time to work out. Now, I'm not calling this a workout because all I did was a little bit of static stretching to help with nursing back because you're nursing, you're hunched over all the time holding your baby. I wanna make sure I was stretching out my chest and my fake boobs. But outside of that, I also started working on some floor recovery exercises, dead bugs, some kneeling diaphragmatic breathing, very simple things like that. This isn't the time to start squatting. Take your time to recover because it's going to aid in the long run. I'll be sure to add a few videos of what I'm talking about as well and make sure that you guys have a good idea of what that looks like. Now, aside from working out, the one thing that no one really prepared me for was how hungry I was going to be postpartum nonetheless as I was breastfeeding. This is definitely not the time to try to lose weight. There is a time and there is a place for this and it is not postpartum. Especially if you're breastfeeding, nursing, pumping, you need to make sure that you're bringing in enough calories for your body to generate milk. The biggest thing I see happen is women wanting to lose weight so bad that they restrict calories and then all of a sudden they wonder why they can't breastfeed their babies anymore. Naturally, there's going to be some variation in milk production person to person, but the biggest thing that's going to attribute to milk production is going to be calories as well as water intake. This is why you never see me without a hydro jug in hand and I literally have one right here. This is the brand new shaker. Isn't it cute in the pink? I just, I love it so much. Now I'm not telling you that you have to go crazy and that you have to even drink 150 ounces a day. Most moms staying at at least 100 ounces a day, it might sound like a lot, but that is going to be the key to success. Even with fake boobs, which a lot of people worry about, this has allowed me to successfully feed two babies and breastfeed them for now almost nine months and a year. That is one of my biggest questions I get is how did you breastfeed with, with implants? For me, I had absolutely no issues and if anything, I over supplied, meaning that I produced too much. When it comes to food, this is also where you want to make sure that you are properly feeding your body as well. Again, we get in this mindset that we want to lose the weight right away in that we sabotage our recovery. So it's not only for breastfeeding either, but in order for a body to recover, it needs to have calories present. Even if you're sick, recovering from a knee injury, your body needs food in order to recover. And your body definitely needs food in order to recover from postpartum, as well as be able to produce breast milk if that's a journey that you decide to go on. You definitely have to stop sabotaging yourself. And that is what I made sure that I did. If there was anything I was hungry for, you better believe I ate it. As I continued to recover, I ramped up my workouts little by little. I would say with my second baby, by six weeks postpartum, I was doing four workouts per week. This doesn't mean that they were high intensity workouts, but I was definitely working out and I did end up getting back on my Peloton. But a lot of the reason why I was able to do that was because of how I recovered in the first place and also how I trained during pregnancy. I utilized my Strong Ass Mom program and this is what really put me ahead of the curve. My Strong Ass Moms program is a program that I created in the NICU with my first son. I knew that I wanted to create a program for moms and I knew that there had to be stages of that. A lot of people bust out postpartum programs and they're like, oh yeah, do this, do that, say that, do that, without ever understanding that there are phases you need to follow in order to properly recover. You cannot expect yourself at six weeks postpartum to do what you were doing, even at nine months pregnant. Everything has shifted and changed and you have to account for that. You have to take off strain of the pelvic floor. You have to properly heal those muscles back together in the core and more. So I knew I wanted to create a three phase program to take you through that. So this is a 10 week program aimed for postpartum starting at six to eight weeks, depending on when you get clearance from your doctor and whether you've had vaginal or cesarean birth. Starting with this was ideal for my recovery and got me back into normal weight training so much faster because I was able to have a proper foundation reset up. The one thing I don't want you guys to forget about though is the fact that I am a professional athlete. So if you take my experience prior to pregnancy, that is five to six years of hardcore training, that's allowed me to come back into my normal physique that's exactly what I worked so hard for years in front loading. So if you want to think about my journey kind of like a front load, that's exactly what I did. I worked extremely hard up until the point when I got pregnant to where my postpartum maintenance 
looks a lot different than if I had started my fitness journey just like one year ago. I do wanna be very open about that because I feel like if you get into the point where you just start to become filled with comparison, you start to forget and you minimize the hard work that anyone had put in before when you start comparing that. I definitely did a lot of sacrifice and that is for sure. I also have a lot of education and that's exactly what I wanna be able to give you guys. But the biggest thing that I definitely did was continue to take care of my core, pelvic floor, as well as listen to my body and what it needed. Some days, maybe that was a workout. Some days, maybe it was just a walk, but I always honored that. Even when it came to me being so far in my pregnancy journey, if there was a day where I could not do a leg day workout, I would maybe do just a few leg machines and then I would finish up the rest walking on a treadmill. Because you know what it never was? That serious. It was never that serious. If you're looking for a plan to put you ahead of the curve, you can use my strong ass mom in pregnancy and postpartum. In pregnancy, you would simply do the phases backwards. So trimester one would be like phase three, trimester two would be basically phase two, trimester three would be phase one. But when you're recovering, you would do phase one first, phase two second, and then phase three. All programs are also yours to keep. So it's not like something that you're only gonna have access to for like one day or one time of the program. You could also redo the program whenever you want. You could only redo phase three and do phase three over and over again. It really is customizable to the experience that you need and you want. The crazy thing for me too is that with my first son, since he was delivered eight weeks early, that is a substantial amount of growth that I never had in my belly or separation in my core. I look better than I did with my first and he was born two months earlier. So on a relative scale, I have definitely done so much better with my postpartum recovery this time around and it's odd because i've actually worked way less but my quality of workouts probably have gone up because i'm not overtraining myself i'm not thinking that i need to earn my recovery i didn't give myself this false idea that i had to look x way by x time i've really just enjoyed the process and i think that's the most important thing that you can do I don't like the idea of bounce back culture at all. I think that it's very toxic to new moms because we already have so much shit on our plate. But if there is one thing I can also say is that you are allowed to feel uncomfortable in your body because it is a huge life change. But don't allow that to take away from the joy that you have right in front of you and that is a brand new child. The biggest thing that you're also gonna have to overcome is sleep deprivation. And that's exactly why I drink five Alani's a day. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't drink five, usually like four. The thing with sleep deprivation is that this can affect a lot of things on your body, including your energy, your digestion, your body's ability to metabolize food and more. So when it comes to food, you have to make sure you're getting your food in to be sure that you have enough energy because you're not just gonna be getting enough energy through your sleeping. This is also where you have to be very honest with yourself of should I be working out or do I need to rest? Or what should my workout look like today? One of my favorite things to say is the plan is not you, you are the plan. Even if you're on a day where it says, oh, like you have legs, if you do not have the energy to do legs, guess what? don't do legs. Or if you decide to do legs, you also have to be honest with how you're feeling and know not to push yourself. Because if you're pushing yourself and you're not ready to, that means that your core could give out, your core couldn't be as stable, you could hurt yourself, you could damage your pelvic floor, and then before you know it, you're peeing when you sneeze, and that's not what we want. I will put some core workouts in the description below that I have uploaded that you guys can utilize in different phases of your postpartum journey. By giving yourself the okay to take a step back, you're allowing your body to recover 10 times better. And remember, like I said, it always comes back down to nutrition. You have to ensure that you are eating enough, especially in the first 12 weeks when we are establishing breast milk production, or those are the biggest just amount of weeks that a lot of the body is recovering. I'm not telling you that you always have to eat leafy greens and all this protein, whatever it may be. At this point, it is just about eating. Obviously, the better your food sources can be, the better it is for you. But if there is a day where you find yourself so overwhelmingly busy that you just have to stop by and grab some Culver's on the way home, it is okay. Honor that your body also just needs energy and fuel and not every day is gonna be perfect. Under this whole umbrella of recovery comes your mental health too. And this is something that I very much struggled with in my motherhood journey, especially with my first. With my second, it got way better and I feel like I've been in a much better spot 
earlier, but I feel like with my first, I lingered in a very dark space for a long period of time. This is how I found so much joy in the gym because it was my one place that I could better myself, get away, have some free time, also allow myself space to feel whatever I needed to feel. Go to the gym, maybe worked up, angry, frustrated, or just on edge, and all of a sudden I would be hitting PRs because I could displace that energy into that workout. When I then left, I could go back being a better mom. Mental health though is no joke, and especially hearing the recent news about the mom in Boston who underwent postpartum psychosis, that was a very hard story to read. And I do just wanna bring light to that because postpartum is a really, really difficult time. And if you feel yourself at all, feeling not like yourself at all, please, please seek help. It's not embarrassing and your support system around you should understand that you're going through a huge change in your life. I know for me, it took a lot of therapy and it took a lot of communication to get me into a spot where I felt like I could not only communicate how I was feeling, but be better at communicating it and not being embarrassed or ashamed. If you find yourself struggling postpartum and you're looking for nutritional guidance, wanting to dig a little bit deeper into postpartum or have any questions about it, comment below, follow me on Instagram, follow me here and I'd love to chat more about it. I feel like it's such a topic that we could dive into and talk about for hours upon hours in a really good conversation. And maybe it's something that I will bring up again on my podcast, but I do think that it's something worth talking about we can look at a lot of women, especially in the fitness space, and look at them and be like, wow, how did they get their body back to where it is now? But you have to realize that they have a lot of education that you might not have. But the goal for us is to be able to give you that education and that confidence in your own journey, as well as the guidance. So if there's anything we're not doing here, it's gatekeeping a single thing. This is all about helping you reach your better self, as well as feeling better in your new motherhood journey or new journey that is to come for you. If you're stumbling across this video and you have any questions about postpartum, core training, prenatal stuff, it doesn't matter what it is. I am a pre and postnatal certified coach. I carry a bachelor's of science in exercise science. I'm an IFBB bikini pro, and I also played division one volleyball. So I have a lot of experience in a lot of different elements of fitness, and I would love to help you. Think of me as like your free trainer in this video. Comment below, let me know. Make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, click the bell so you never miss a video from me and let me know how I can help you further. And for God's sake, let me enjoy my fake in peace. Thank you so much and I'll see you in next week's video.